Um, first and foremost, I want to give all honor, praises, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Bakakudash. Double honor to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Peace and salutation to the hopeful elect, pushing this true doctrine across the four winds, earth, and all truth and necessity. I'm Lamad Ariyaf from Mississippi Camp. Lord willing, this be an edifying lesson. And this is going to be a lesson, Lord willing, an edifying lesson, just pretty much to the point. I think the title will be something to the effect of uh, just making the point. Because uh, I'm going to start out this scripture. I'm going to play a quick video or a quick clip. Then I'm going to uh, finish up with the scripture. But this is the book Ezekiel, chapter 35, starting verse 6. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord, Yahweh, our power, I will thee, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Sit thou, since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. And who is this talking about? This is talking about Esau, Edom, the Edomites, because they have shed the blood of the saints. They have done so much to the Lord's chosen people that, you know, they have pretty much just been like a been running like a slaughter campaign on the nation of Israel. And this goes back starting with um uh, with uh, uh Cain and Abel. Okay? And it has been that perpetual hatred since Jacob and Esau. So the Lord is informing Esau that since he even hated, since he had not hated blood, blood shall pursue thee. Okay, verse seven. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate, and cut off from it that passes out and him that returneth. Okay, now let's read that in um, the NLT. Okay, again Ezekiel chapter thirty-five, verse six in the NLT. It reads, as surely as I live, says the sovereign Lord Yahweh, since you show no distaste for blood, I will give you a bloodbath of your own. Your turn has come. I will make Mount Seir utterly desolate, killing off all who try to escape and any who return. So Esau, at the end of the day, they're going to be utterly destroyed, man. But the Lord has a, a a a a bone to pick with Esau for all the the must, must, monstrous and, and and wicked and devilish things in, in to the nation of Israel with no mercy. Okay, and the thing that's coming back to him is going to be justified. Now, the point of this video I'm going to go into is that. When you bring when the, when we bring this up today, telling Esau that he's gonna go down, that he's gonna be destroyed, destroyed, you know, for the the, the just injustice of uh, the Lord's people. These Edomites will say, "Well, that wasn't us. We didn't have nothing to do with slavery. We didn't have nothing to do with you know Jim Crow. All those things that went on in the past." But but the Bible, the Bible states differently and i'm gonna get into that but i'm gonna play a video before i uh read that uh that passage man in the book isaiah okay so i know i'm a little all over the place but lord willing it'll be edifying and make sense once i'm done so um i'm gonna play this clip right here then i get another scripture Be the leader of the Vikings we've been hearing for days and smelling for a week. My name is King Canute, and I have come to kill you for the crimes your father committed against my people. Okay. Now that was pretty much the point I was getting to. See, we all come back in reincarnation. We are of our forefathers. 
Israel will punish for the thing that our forefathers have done, being disobedient, worshiping other gods. Okay, you know, Israel being disobedient, worshiping other gods. And we was punished. So Esau is going to be punished for their iniquities of their forefathers, what they did to the nation of Israel. Okay, and the scripture states that, and I'm going to get into that right here. It's the book Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 21. And even at the top of uh, Isaiah proves that we are the Lord's chosen people because it states that, you know, how the Lord, you know, would uh, have mercy on uh, Jacob and yet choose the nation of Israel. Okay? So, that's just a, you know, point I want to make right there, but this is the book, Isaiah, again, chapter 14, sorry, verse 21. It reads, prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers. And see, that clip I showed was off of um, this uh, series called Vikings Valhalla. And see, if, if brothers or anybody ever seen, you know, the regular Vikings, the Vikings had migrated to the West and settled over there amongst Europe. And then the, uh, they had pretty much made covenants with the uh, king of England over there and agreed to let them settle in lands there. That way they can farm, you know, raise their uh, family, grow crops, so on and so forth. Pretty much that's become of that um, nation, if you will, or their region, if you will. But as years progressed and went by, then you had Vikings Valhalla to come out and the king of England broke his covenant and he had all the Vikings that were selling those lands. He had them killed, had them slaughtered. It was called a massacre. So King Canute had gathered all the Vikings and, and, and wanted to, or said, see who would join him to, uh, avenge their people. But in the midst of all that, the king of England died. So his son became the king before they could get to him, right? And King Canute said he was there to kill him for the iniquity of his father, basically. All right? So again, back at the top of Isaiah 14, chapter 21, it said prepare prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers. So King Canute wanted to kill the son, was planning to kill the son because of what his father did, right? That they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, said the Lord Yahweh of hosts, and cut off from Babylon, the name and the remnant and the nephew and the son and the nephew, said the Lord, the Lord Yahweh. So we're going to read that in NLT. Isaiah 14, 21. Kill this man's children. Let them be. Let them die because of their father's sins. They must not rise and conquer the earth, filling the world with their cities. This is what the Lord of heaven's army says. I might have risen against Babylon. I would destroy its children and its children's children, said the Lord Yahweh. And that's that's the point. The, the, the Edomites that are going to be dwelling on the earth when Yahweh shall return are their forefathers back in reincarnation. And they're going to be judged for their sins in the past, man. And, and that's it. So they think they don't have, they don't have nothing to do with it. They don't think that they was there, but in some kind of shape, form, or fashion, they hands have blood on it. Their hands have blood on them for the participation in the slaughtering of the injustice and all the wickedness 
and uh, uh, merciless things that was done to the nation of Israel. Okay? And that's pretty much the point. I'm going to play this one more time. I'm going to close out. You must be the boy king. Edmund. And you must be the leader of the Vikings we've been hearing for days and smelling for a week. My name is King Canute. And I have come to kill you. For the crimes your father committed against my people. You must be the boy king. Edmund. And you must be the leader of the Vikings we've been hearing for days and smelling for a week. My name is King Canute. And I have come... To kill you for the crimes your father committed against my people. Lord, witness edifying. Shalom.